with Evangelist Renee Sellers on the prayer line, Monday through Friday, beginning at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to say. Dial 1-712-770-4010 using access code 266 Five nine zero. That's one seven one two seven seven zero four zero one zero. Using access code two six six five nine zero. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see on the prayer line with Evangelist Renee Sellers. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, with my pastors, Pastor Samuel Sellers III. And we're live at 5 this morning, and I cannot believe it's already Wednesday, but it's winning Wednesday, so we're in a good place. We're live at 5 this morning on WHLJ 97.5 FM. Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. And you can join us on the conference call with these awesome men and women of God as they are coming in this morning from all around the country at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. Uh, I keep trying to go there, Miss Lee, but I won't go there. No more recaps. To God be the glory. But I'm excited today as I, maybe I need to do another intro, make think of something, give me something, Holy Spirit. But I'm excited today as we continue our well, we continue our journey in the Gospel of John. But I want to pause where Jesus prays for unity. He prays for unity. He prays for himself. And uh, you know, Jesus was never selfish, so he intercedes for his apostles, he intercedes for those that were directly connected to him, uh, the 11, because Judas has left the building. But in, in also those apostles represent leadership in the church, leadership that is to come. In the third part of John 17, he prays for all of us who believe, all of us who would be impacted by their ministry. So we're going to start there, but then we're going to skip over to Ephesians chapter 4. I want to bring back, and I don't know if I've shared this before, shared this, I've shared nuggets of it, but I want to talk about Ephesians chapter 4. I want to do a part two of United by Faith. Someone sent something to me yesterday that reminds me of just how important unity is in the body of Christ. She also reminded me of the source of some disharmony. Uh, we're going to talk about it in just a moment. I'm going to deal with that in just a moment. But I am going to ask Evangelist Paulette Griffin all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, where it is probably 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> to take to open us up with a word of prayer. God bless you. Ephesians chapter 4 is where we're going this morning, verses 1 through 6. Evangelist Griffin. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, just to be able to come before that throne room of grace. We thank you, Lord God, for the fresh anointing, for stirring up the very gifts in us, Lord God, that as we come together from the north to south, the east and the west, together in your name, giving you glory, praise, and honor for this day and every day that you breathe the breath of life into us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together glorifying and praising thy name. For thine, O Lord, you are the greatness and the power, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. We know no other help but thee. Your word is that caused me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I shall walk, where I lift up my soul unto thee, Lord God. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you minister into our hearts, our minds, and our spirit. Open up our spiritual minds and ears to receive thy word this day. As you bless this precious woman of God to bring forth the word of God. Heavenly Father, to bring life right now, Lord God, that we shall go forth in victory and in praise. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Pastor Samuel. Evangelist Renee Sellers for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line here on Foxy 97.5 FM. We thank you for each and every day, Lord God, that we have to be able to glorify and to praise thy name. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for this day and every day for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do. It is in the matchless name of Jesus we thank you and praise you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. My subject today is United by Faith, and this is part two. United by Faith. And I want to encourage you to, if you can, go to YouTube and pull up, and they couldn't play the song uh, yesterday, but YouTube by Tasha Page Lockhart and pull up United by Faith. Everything that we need to to share today is in that one song, United by Faith. Um, and I, I want to encourage you, as we go over to Ephesians 4, I'm going to share and reiterate something that I shared at a church anniversary where the theme was moving forward while united extremes. Jesus prayed for unity. He interceded for the apostles. He interceded for us. He's still interceding on our behalf, even today. Uh, yesterday, he said, he, he, the, the Word of God said, First John uh, chapter 2, even if we sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. And so verse 11 of John 17, before we go to Ephesians, Jesus prays, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. John chapter 17, verse 20, he says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Not, I'm not only praying for the leaders that I trained, the ones that I chose, uh, minus the son of perdition, but I'm also praying for those who will believe because of their word, their ministry, their preaching and teaching, their evangelistic work, their 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 uh, their, their leadership. All those who God who will believe. <laughs> through their words, all of those who's coming after them that they're going to minister to, that they're going to empower, I'm praying for them. He says in verse 21, he prays that they shall all, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So unity, love shows the world who we're connected to, who we who we learn from. Jesus said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples, my pupils, my, my learners, my students, my apprentices. Uh, the world will know that you were taught and trained by me if you love one another. So unity, love, will let the world know who we learn from. Unity will turn the world, will point the world to Jesus Christ and will cause them to believe that Jesus was sent. Verse 22 says, And the glory which thou gave me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, United by Faith, part 2. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. Apostle Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called, in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through you and through all and in you all. And so Jesus 
praise. He is in us all, Paul says. And Jesus prays that they all may be one, 21, John 17. Father, uh, art, art in, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. So one God, one Father, who is above all and through all and in you all. Yesterday I received a video of uh, Pastor Powerful Mess. Well, the clip that I got was powerful. But he said, I almost entitled this message, Just Shut Up. <laughs> he said, I almost entitled this message, Just Shut Up. Because he said there used to be, you know, there's always been, he said, how do you know that this is evil? How do you know it's, if it's of the devil? Because it keeps going. And I can't remember the pastor's name, and I am I apologize for that. But if you look on social media, you'll probably find it. I apologize for not knowing his name, but he ministered this. And he says, I almost tell this, just shut up, because it, it, the vision, it, it, it keeps moving, whether we're black or white, whether we're blue or green, and it moves on from that. Now he says that we're, we're uh, divided uh, with, uh, for uh, the unvaccinated, the vaccinated, don't wear masks, do wear masks. And this is what he was saying. You know, pretty much I shared this with my friend on yesterday, that we are condemning people because of their right to choose. We are, con even in those of us who are believers, are condemning one another because of what we chose. Don't come to my church if you wear, I'm quoting what someone else said. If you come to my church with a mask on, don't come to my church with a mask on. You can go to the church down the street. And I said, that is condemning. What if that's the day that they came to church because they wanted to give their lives to Jesus Christ? Are we preaching mask or are we preaching Jesus? Are we preaching vaccination or are we preaching the word of God? And I said, if we're going to educate the people, let's educate the people, but let's not condemn the people. Paul says, I would not have you ignorant. So if there's something about the vaccine or the mask that you want the people to know, educate them without condemning them for their choice. Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't condemn the woman that was caught in adultery for her choice. He did not condemn her, but he did tell her, go and sin no more. And so, and so he, 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 he reminded me of the source of the disharmony. And I shared this that, you know, while, while many are, you know, looking at the election and we're saying that, you know, we, we get people are, are upset about the election. We're divided about, about the election. The election is not the source of the disharmony. The, the root of it was already in the hearts of people, and this just exposed what was already in hearts. Satan is the source of disharmony. And the man of God said, uh, listen, I'm, t I'm talking to the enemy. I know what you're trying to do, and I know what he's trying to do. And this is what I said to my friend. I said, I just talked about unity, Jesus' prayer for unity this morning. And this just hit me, that Satan is seeking to pervert what Jesus prayed for. Satan is attempting to pervert what Jesus prayed for. Jesus prayed for this. He interceded for us way back when. He is seeking to pervert. He always comes against the word. Can I say that again? Can we go back to Genesis chapter 3? Has God said, he said to the woman. So he always comes against the word. And Jesus had to remind him in Matthew 4 of what that it is written, it is written, it is written. And so thereby he's seeking to pervert or come against the word. He's trying to come against all that Jesus prayed for. Why? Because he still wants glory. His agenda hasn't changed. He may be trying to do it a different way, but he still wants glory. And the only way that he can he can accomplish this is with if if is if we allow it to happen. Judas had an open door. These people that are divided and angry and 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 condemning others because of, you get vaccinated. You know, you you don't know God. You know, if you if you don't get vaccinated, you wear a mask. You don't have no faith. Come on, somebody, let people have their choice and so as we go through this and and and, and the theme was moving forward while uniting extremes there's always been some form 
of extreme within the church. And I shared this, that some of those extreme views was, you know, and, and there's still some that exist today. A woman can preach, but she can't pastor. <laughs> she can't pastor. She, if she does come over, she's she going to preach from the floor. All these different views. Uh, you, you know, you, 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 can, you can pastor, but you can't be elevated if you, you've been divorced and remarried. All kind of different views. You, you, you wear a skirt. You can't wear a dress. All these different things. You don't wear pants. All, don't, you know, all these different things. But I heard Bishop Jake says, as long as Jesus is preached, but there's always been some kind of extreme views, and sometimes those views are based on uh, people's way of thinking and not necessarily based on Scripture. I believe my spiritual mother said a long time ago that some things are, uh, I'm going to paraphrase, I can't remember exact, her exact words, I'm just going to say it like this, some things are a matter of opinion and are not necessarily, she did say, scripturally correct. And I want to encourage you this morning that even in this hour of extreme political and religious views, people who once had fellowship with each other are no longer coming together because of extremes. Uh, Timothy uh, Damperill wrote in Christianity Today, Regarding the issue of extreme political views, he said that each side asserts the other has succumbed to unreason, to prejudice, or to the lust for power or approval. If you voted one way, you're not a Christian. You're, you're standing for, you know, you, you believe in, in abortion. If you voted another way, you're racist. If you voted one way, you don't know God. If you voted another way, you're, you're, you're allowing all kinds of stuff to go on. You're white supremacist or, or you're racism. Whatever it is, that, that this may not be a major issue, watch this now, had it not been named among believers. This, this may not be a major issue had it not been named among those of us in the body. And so his overall, Timothy Damperil's overall explanation for these extremes, he said, he said each had a different vision of the kingdom of God. The reason for these overall, this is what he said that each had a different vision of the kingdom of God. And I, I, I say that, that each had an issue in the heart that had not been dealt with because it stems. Frustration is an issue of the heart. And I watched uh, uh, some things on a documentary or movie about some some things that occurred back in the 50s and the, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and I realized that there are still some things that have been passed down from generation to generation, still some things in the hearts of people that have not been dealt with. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. So we should be praying together instead of falling apart. Can somebody help me say amen? We should be praying together no matter our differences because if we learn to pray together, there may not be so many differences. There may not be so many differences. So the word extremes, uh, it means either of two abstract things that are as different from each other as possible. The word abstract is from a Latin word which means pulled away. Uh, it means pulled away or, or detached. And, and when something is detached, it is separated or disconnected. It is separated or disconnected. So this morning we, we're talking about unity in spite of what may try to cause the disconnection. Listen, the, Jesus you know, was not uh, uh, ignorant of the fact that there was going to be an attempt to bring disunity and disharmony. Paul was not ignorant of the fact that there's an attempt to bring you a disharmony and discord. We cannot be ignorant of Satan's devices. And so, ooh, God, so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, Ephesians is called the book of the church. And, and this letter or epistle, and, and when I, I'm, we're going to do an in-depth study of Ephesians at some point on Command Your Morning because as I studied it in preparation for uh, this church anniversary, I, I realized how beautiful Paul wrote this book, how beautiful Paul wrote this letter to the church. This book of the church 
is what is called one of Paul's prison epistles. And so Philippians and Colossians and Philemon, Paul was a, a true servant, a true apostle, a true uh, one that was sent. Why? Because prison didn't stop him from serving. I need somebody to say no matter what you're going through, you won't stop serving. You won't stop doing. You won't stop preaching to the people no matter what's going on. Listen, even if you have to do it through an email, don't stop serving. Prison did not stop him from being diligent about his father's business. And I believe even today, Apostle Paul will be going through in the churches, laying hands and, and casting out devils. He wouldn't have any fear because of who he served. And a true servant of God does not let circumstances stop them from being diligent about their father's business. Listen, Paul was not a lazy leader, and he wasn't in it to make a name for himself. As a matter of fact, listen, he he, he was called to it, and, and, and because he was called, watch this, now everything Paul did, he was true to it, even before he was knocked off his horse on the road to Damascus. I use that phrase. Even before his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul was true to what he did. So he was called to this, and he was true to this. Paul was in prison. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked, all because he was chosen for to be a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I said on that night that Paul was chosen for servanthood and for suffering. <laughs> oh, God, chosen for servanthood and for suffering. In Acts chapter 9, the Lord spoke to a disciple by the name of Ananias in a vision and told him Saul of Tarsus, he he received a vision that a man named Ananias was coming in, laying hands on him that he might receive his sight. Ananias was was a little nervous about that because, you know, he he had received the word on the street about this Saul of Tarsus and what he was doing to the people of God. Jesus told, told Saul of Tarsus, which became Paul, he said, why do you persecute me? Mm. Why do you persecute me? Because what Paul was doing to the people, anything that happens to to God's people, it concerns God. Jesus was saying, why are you persecuting me as we are connected to him, as we are joint heirs with Christ? Why are you persecuting me? So I want somebody to be encouraged this morning that what they doing to you, they're doing to God. If you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so there by Acts chapter 9, verse 15, 16, the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will shew him or show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. He was chosen, but he was going to suffer. He was chosen, but he, he the Lord said, I will show you great things that he must suffer for my name's sake. This word suffer in Greek means a painful sensation or experience. If you're suffering for for the name of God, listen, don't think it's strange. You're not in this by yourself. You are not alone, ladies and gentlemen. So so actually some of this is part of the journey. Oh God, but you got to remember that you're never alone because our Father is Jehovah Shammah. The word suffer means, in Greek means a painful sensation or experience. And I share that a lot of people try to jump into leadership. They try to jump into ministry. Everybody wants to be an apostle and a prophet. Listen, a few people want to be a teacher. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a five-fold ministry. And, and a lot of times they don't last because they can't handle the painful experiences. Sometimes we get in it, we jump in it because we were not chosen or called. We went instead of being sent. And so we can't handle the painful experiences. Those of us who understand that that the role of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, we recognize that these are spiritual gifts. A lot of people are title-driven and and many instead of being spirit-led. And so thereby Paul was chosen. He was chosen. He He would suffer. He would deal with some painful experiences. He didn't jump in it for a title because we got to understand that the apostolic is not a title. It is a function. It is a, it is a responsibility. It is a 
it, it gives major responsibility in the body of Christ. And these spiritual gifts carry a great level of responsibility because they help prepare the body to be mature, unified uh, together to develop maturity, to, that, that we be in unity in our faith. Paul is expressing this in this letter. He was committed even before Jesus uh, uh, came to him. He was committed to what he was doing. He was zealous already. So thereby, when he came to the Lord, this, he, was, he was still serving, even while suffering. <laughs> he was serving, <laughs> even while suffering. A lot of people have been going through during this pandemic, but I pray, pray blessings on those who are still serving in spite of your current condition. You're still doing the best that you can to do ministry in spite of your present condition. You're still doing the best that you can, even though you don't really like doing Facebook Live, you're doing it in spite of your present condition. There are those of you that have some things going on that if people knew you had those things going on, they'd be like, how in the world are you still moving? Because we recognize that oftentimes serving ministry includes suffering. So in this epistle, chapters 1 through 3, are doctrinal. They deal with our position in Christ, who we are in Christ and how we came to be. Chapters 4 through 6 are relative to our duty, our practice in Christ. It deals with our lifestyle as believers. We know uh, chapter 6 talks about putting on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. I highlighted a few quotes between chapters 1 and 3 just to give us a picture of why Paul tells us in chapter 4 and 1 to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. In Ephesians 1, Paul tells us that God chose us before the foundation of the world. In Ephesians 1 and 7, it says, In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, it tells us that we were once dead in our sins, but we were saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul tells us that he has given us uh, the least of all saints, the noble, given him rather, God has given him the least of all saints, the noble responsibility of preaching to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And then Paul begins to say in Ephesians chapter 3, 17 through 19, he begins to say, and I want to read this in the Living Bible. He says, I pray that, verse 17 through 19, the Living Bible, Ephesians 3, he says, I pray that Christ, Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love, and may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is, and to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at last you will be filled up with God himself. If you feel the love of God this morning as we read from this text this morning i want to encourage you to give god a praise and say lord i thank you for loving me in spite of me i gotta take a quick break for station id we're talking about united by faith moving forward while uniting extremes we're live at five this morning on whlj 97.5 fm statenville valdosta moultrie georgia you can join us online this morning at foxy f-o-x-y 97.com. You can join us on the conference call with these phenomenal men and women of God at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. I want somebody to be encouraged. You are victorious this morning. So Paul says in Ephesians 4 and 1, he says, I therefore... And that word, therefore, in Greek means but now or consequently. In other words, in light of everything that I've told you in the first three chapters or in this letter, which was not originally divided into chapter and verse, 
Because of what I told you, I beg you to walk worthy of the vocation to which you've been called. I beg you to live like you know that if, if it had not been for the Lord, somebody said, I don't know where I would be. I don't know about you, but I don't know where I would be. I'd probably be sleeping in my grave. I'd probably be dead. I'd probably be lifting up my eyes in hell had it not been for the Lord. One Greek definition of vocation means the divine invitation to embrace the salvation of God. <laughs> vocation, he says, walk worthy of the vocation. The word vocation in Greek means the divine invitation to embrace the salvation of God. So Paul says to walk worthy, to walk worthy, to 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 walk worthy of the vocation, or walk in the divine. In the, you embrace the salvation of God. Let me let me start right there. Embrace the salvation of God. Walking worthy is embracing the salvation of God by walking in who we were, who we who we came to be when we got saved, and that's a believer. The previous chapters in Ephesians tells us that God has blessed us, that He chose us. Somebody say He adopted us, He accepted us, He redeemed us, He gave us an inheritance, He sealed us. We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And Paul reminds us that we were once dead to sin, but because of Jesus, we are made alive lie together. We had no hope, oh God. We were without hope, oh God, because we were without God. And Amplified of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 and 3 says, so I, the prisoner of the Lord, appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. In other words, to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity and mature behavior a life that expresses gratitude to god for your salvation can somebody get up out of your seat off your sofa out of your bed and begin to give god praise we don't only express gratitude by saying hallelujah we express gratitude by living a holy life and so thereby with all humility forsaking self righteousness what is happening in our nation while we're judging and condemning one another is because there is a lot of self-righteousness going on i'm judging you because you wear a mask you don't wear a mask if you don't want to wear one don't wear one but i choose to wear one don't judge me because i'm i choose to do me i want to encourage you to let go of the self-righteous mentality today and it says without humility forsaking self-righteousness and gentleness, maintaining self-control. I was watching a school board meeting in Tennessee the other night, and there was a lot of people at that school board meeting that was out of control with their mouths and with their attitude. And they just, just uh, in a, a minute, just uh, inches away from breaking the law. See, people... <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, people know how to do, you know, how to get to you. Some people that have evil intent, that have some stuff in their heart that needs to be dealt with, know how to get get under your skin without breaking the law. They, they, they barely cross the line. They know how to keep, stay out of jail while still trying to frustrate your purpose. But anyway, uh, and gentleness, maintaining self-control with patience, bear with one another in un selfish love just to amplify in unselfish love it's not about me we're united by faith it says make every effort to keep the oneness of the spirit in the bond of peace let me read this from the amplified each individual working together to make the whole Successful. Can somebody say we are united by faith, each individual working together, working together to make the whole successful. It's not about me, myself, and I. It's not about whether or not I want to wear a mask and you don't. It's not about whether or not I get vaccinated and you decide not to. It's not about that. It's about us working together to make the whole successful. If you want to educate me about something, then educate me. But do not condemn your brother, and your sister. So how do we move forward, moving forward while uniting extremes? How do we do that? In spite of our differences, 
Each individual must be considerate of everybody else. I shared this that during the election there were extreme different views about you know whether or not the election was stolen or not. These were extreme different views. And and you, we almost got to a place where you know the the inauguration was in limbo because of extreme disagreement in government and in the nation. So Paul says to be humble and be patient and bear with one another because we may not always agree, but write this down if you're taking notes. Disagreement does not have to lead to division. Disagreement does not have to lead to division. I read a quote recently that said, unity is the church. And we're not just talking about one ministry, one local church. We're talking about the entire universal church, the body of Christ. Across the board, we're talking about the universal church unity. While Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus, this is relative to all of us. Unity is the church. Where there is no unity, there is no church. I know we're on radio time and pausing is like an hour. For one second, it's like a long time. But unity is the church, ladies and gentlemen. This is what Jesus prayed for this is what he was praying for in john chapter 17 unity is the church the people are going to know that that jesus was sent with our unity and that where there is no unity there is no church i said this yesterday that unity is oneness it's harmony it's agreement it's cooperation it's pulling together lady whitaker is you and i standing shoulder to shoulder is you and i working side Side by side. Ladies and gentlemen, I shared from Acts chapter 2 what unity looks like in the church. Acts chapter 2. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. There are five characteristics of unity in Ephesians, Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 46. And they continued, God, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Number one is it says, and fellowship, and in breaking a bread. So number one, fellowship is the first characteristic in this text of unity, and in breaking bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed, believers were together. The second attribute or characteristic of unity is together and had all things in common. The third characteristic of unity in this text, they had all things in common in common, and sold their possessions and goods, parted them to all men as every man had a need. The fourth characteristic of unity in this particular text, they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They did eat with gladness. The fifth characteristic of unity in this text is and with singleness of heart, one accord, one heart. That's the church. Fellowship Together, all things in common, one accord, one heart. <laughs> one accord, one heart. And so they broke bread. They came together. They might, and, and, and we have diversity of gifts in the body. But with the diversity of gifts, we should be working together. The leadership gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, which I mentioned in Ephesians chapter 4, were given to the church to help cultivate unity. The five-fold ministry leaders work together. We're not separate. We might attend separate church ministries. We might attend, you might be down the street and I'm around the corner. But the five-fold ministry leaders work together to help the whole function effectively. Can I say that again? The five-fold ministry leaders are not in competition, but they're in collaboration. Somebody write that down. I need that now. I'm going to need that next week. The fivefold ministry leadership gifts of the, that, that Christ gave to the church are to never be in competition, but should always be in collaboration. And the purpose of the collaboration 
is to help the whole function effectively. And so thereby, when the leaders of our apostles said this several years ago, he used to say this all the time. He said, when the leaders, apostle wings, are united, the, the leaders in the church, the leaders are united, the community will be united. When the leaders are united, the members will be united. So therefore, this kind of unity in this text is more than relational. It's more about relationship, rather, than organization. Let me say it again. It's more relational than organizational. This kind of unity is a matter of the heart. One heart, one accord, one heart. So unity is a bond, and a bond is, is an idea of gluing something together, cementing something together. It is very difficult to pull something apart that is bonded. Mm. It is very difficult to pull something apart that is bonded. Vincent Sawyer, he said, a home without peace is a home without togetherness. Vincent said, a business without peace is a business without harmony. He said, a church without peace is a church without unity. It is the job of church leadership to ensure unity and maturity of the saints. It is our job to make sure that we do the work necessary to promote oneness, in the church, but in order, we got to be working together in order for that to happen. We are one Lord, one day, one body, one spirit, even as we are called, and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So looking down in the text as we get ready to go, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through 32. I'm going to read it from the contemporary English version. And I'm going to go as quickly as possible. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through 32. Contemporary English version this morning. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through 32. Let me look at the, let's do the Living Bible. Let's go to the Living Bible. We have fallen in love with the Living Bible and CEV, the Living Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, 25 through 32. It says, stop lying to each other. (laughs) Tell the truth. For we are parts of each other, and when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. Wait, let me go back. For we are parts of each other, and when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. If you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Don't let the sun go down with with you still angry. Get over it quickly. For when you are angry, you give a mighty foothold to the devil. If anyone is stealing, he must stop it and begin using those hands for his of his for honest work so he can give to others in need. Don't use bad language. Say only what is good and helpful to those you are talking to and what would give them a blessing. Don't cause the Holy Spirit sorrow by the way you live. Remember, he is the one who marks you to be present on that day when salvation from sin will be complete. Stop being mean, bad-tempered, and angry, quarreling, harsh words, and dislike of others should not have no place in your lives. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Hallelujah. In the contemporary English version, I pardon me, I lost my place in my, in my tablet this morning. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, be ye therefore, I want to look at this, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and savor. Be ye therefore followers of God. And another word for followers is imitators. Imitators of God as dear children. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. It says, 19 through 21, in the CEV, it says, When you meet together, 
when you come together for corporate worship, when you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God, the Father, for everything. Honor Christ and put each other first. Put others first. The King James says, submitting yourselves one to another. And that word submit means to agree or give in. Why? Because we are united by our faith, our faith. In Jesus Christ is what unites us, whether we're black, white, blue, green, yellow, orange, whatever we look like, whoever we are, we are united by faith. We are believers. Ladies and gentlemen, don't give the enemy a foothold. Don't give him opportunity. Give no place to the devil today, but allow your, your listen, but let the, the love of Jesus Christ rule your heart today. Love ye one another because of who we are, because of what Jesus prayed for. While the enemy is trying to pervert it, we don't have to allow it. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We are united by faith. So, 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 so I want to encourage you. How do you unite, move forward while uniting extremes? Do what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He submitted to the will of the Father. Even though he was dealing with extreme emotional agony, He submitted to the will of his Father. How do we unite, uh, move forward while uniting extremes? All of us must submit to the will of our Father. United by Faith was our subject today, and I am going to ask uh, Evangelist Dorothy Irving to take us in, Evangelist, for the next seven minutes, if you can. With a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise, oh God, for this day, another day that you have made, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your faithfulness, your loving kindness towards us, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for choosing us even before the foundation of the world, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, that you are the everlasting Father, oh God. You are the God that never sleeps, never slumber, oh God. You are the God that does not grow tired. I'm weary, oh God. You are our strength. You are a hiding place, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you today for your word, for all your promises in your word are yes and amen to your glory. For not one of your promises has ever failed, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you said that you will never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. Lord, your word said you know the way of the righteous, oh God, but the way of the ungodly shall perish, oh God. Lord, we thank you for stretching out your hands towards us, oh God, with salvation, healing, and deliverance, oh God. Lord, we hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you will order our steps in your word. Give us understanding according to your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give us strength, oh God, in our inner man, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we ask you that you will look upon those that may be hurting this morning, wounded, oh God, broken in their spirit, oh God. We ask that you will touch them, oh God, just like you touch Peter's wife, mother, oh God. Lord, we ask you that you will touch your sons and daughters this morning, oh God. Oh God, give them strength, oh God. Release healing in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, we ask that you will release that anointing that would destroy every yoke that the enemy has set up against your people. Let the strongholds be torn down. We ask that you go ahead of us and make the cricket places straight, oh God. Lord, we thank you this morning that your word is living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. We thank you that your word can cut through sickness and disease, doubt and unbelief, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are El Shaddai, the almighty God, the all-breasted God. You are the all-sufficient one. You are our warrior and our banner, the God that sees, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your grace, oh God. Oh God,
God, we just look up to heaven from which all our help comes from. All of our help comes from you, the Lord that made the heaven and the earth, oh God. Lord, you said that you will preserve us from all evil. You will preserve our soul, that you will preserve our going out and coming back in, oh God. You said for us not to be dismayed, not to be fearful, oh God, because you are our God. Lord, you said that you will help us. Lord, you said that you will uphold us with the righteousness of your right hand, oh God. And Lord, we don't mind waiting on you, oh God, because in waiting on you, Lord, we are, our strength is renewed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are so mighty, you are so great, oh God. And Lord, we say this morning, oh God, to rule and to reign in our lives and our families in our churches, in our situations, in our circumstances, oh God, because you are a very great God, oh God. You are the God that laid the foundation of the earth that it should not be removed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just bless your name this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor your name. We honor the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus, oh God, is our strong tower. That name is the name that we can run into and be safe. Oh God, we thank you this morning that you are our shepherd, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we thank you for redeeming our life from destruction, oh God, for crowning us with loving kindness and tender mercy, for satisfying our mouth with good things, oh God. So our youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh God, just look upon your people this morning, oh God. Just have mercy, oh God, upon us, thou son of David. Give strength, give us wisdom, give us direction. And Lord, we pray your blessing this morning upon this program, command your morning. We uh, pray your blessings, oh God, upon Dr. Sellers and Pastor Sellers and all those that are on this line this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Evangelist uh, Darlene, uh, Dorothy Irvin from Jackson, Mississippi. We thank God for you. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. God bless you. God keep you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that, ladies and gentlemen, you can begin to declare, I win, I am victorious. You can declare that I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. You can declare that I am chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. You can declare that I am predestined, O oh God, to be a son of, or a daughter of God. I am sanctified. And I am one with the sanctifier, Jesus Christ. He is not ashamed to call me a brother or a sister. I receive the Spirit of God into my life that I might know the things given to me by God. I have been redeemed, forgiven, and I am a recipient of his lavish grace. I have been raised up and seated with Christ in the heavenlies today. I have Christ himself in me. Christ lives in me. I have been firmly rooted in Christ, and I am now built up in him. I have been buried, raised, and made alive with Christ. I've been raised up with Christ. My life is now hidden with Christ in God. I've been given a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I have been saved and called and set apart according to God's doing. I have a right to come boldly before the throne of grace, to find mercy and grace in a time of need. I've been given exceedingly great and precious promises by God, which I am a, a partaker of his divine nature. I have the mind of Christ, and my mind is renewed daily. I have, oh God, I have obtained an inheritance. I have overcome the world. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I shall overcome because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm determined to press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus today. Today we thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of all our sins and healing us of all diseases. It is written in your word that if we cry out to you, that you will heal us in Jesus' name. Oh God, we thank you today that we are fearfully and 
wonderfully made. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Father. We give you glory today, Father, that we are your children. We are your handiwork. Oh, God, we are blessed and highly favored. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, you are the God who gives us power to get well. So we will remember you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We are healed, set free, delivered, set apart for your use and for your glory. And we thank you today for redemption. We thank you today for your love. We thank you today for this word. We give you glory today, and we're determined to do it, not only with our lips, but with our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you for listening to Command Your Morning today. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, visit the Upper Room. I only want to say if. I truly believe it has. So go to uh, the UpperRoomWayCross.com. Click on the link to give and partner with us. Pa- Tasha Page Lockhart, I think we got it today. United by faith. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Hallelujah. Maybe you're the one, maybe you're the one to start it. Let it begin with me. Oh, now. What if it all depended on me to change the world, to change the world? What if my only responsibility Change the world, change the world, let me be the one to start the revolution. Let me sing my song to the people of the world. It all begins with Don't hang around, stand 
Yeah, 